Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum to all of you. In this particular video, I'm going to talk about feasibility report. Now, uh, first of all, the most important thing is that you must understand that in different contexts, different feasibility uh, type, different types of feasibility reports are written, and the format formats may also differ. So this is just one format that uh, I'm sharing with you. Further, you can build on your understanding. So the first thing is that you give a heading feasibility report right in the center. And then you see a box. Now this box depends on one thing, whether the report is written inside the organization or outside the organization. So if the report is written to someone outside the organization, then uh, the report should follow letter format. But if it is written and submitted to someone inside the organization, within the organization, then the report can follow this memo format order that we have already discussed in the class so many times. So um, you draw a box and you write these four things to followed by one line space and then from followed by one line space, then subject followed by one line space and then date. So the line on which you write the word date, you draw a line underneath that you you draw a line even on that line to close this box if you are writing this report manually if you are typing then it's fine so the first thing is that you have to ensure that all the four things to from subject and date all these four things are properly aligned right there should not be anything for example, anything misaligned, for example, you start uh, to from this place and then you start from here and subject from this place and date from this place. So instead of doing this, try and draw an imaginary line and keep all these four things aligned. As you can see, all the four things, more, the name of the uh, Se uh, recipient uh, which is Muhammad Alam, the name of the sender, Karan Kumar, both are aligned and similarly the subject and the date both are aligned. All the four things are aligned. So alignment is very important. So in two sections we, uh, we have written uh, name followed by a comma and then the designation of the person. Similarly, uh, whoever the uh, you know the sender is, the name of the person, full name of the person followed by a comma and then uh, the designation of the person followed by a forward slash. That's very important. So understand this. So forward slash and after that you write uh, signature. If you do not put your signature, then you put the initials of your own name. So if the name is Karan Kumar, the initials will be KK. Then you come to the subject and as we have discussed in the memo, in the memo random format, the subject line will be in title case. So which means uh, capitalize each word. That's these are the words that you get in Microsoft Word format. So uh, and regarding date, we have discussed so many times. So date in two digits followed by month in full spelling, followed by a comma and then year and then a, a full stop or a dot, whatever you may call it. Now, once the box is over, then you leave one line space. This is one line space where you, you must, you know, uh, put this one line space here. I'm also mentioning so that you don't forget. Obviously, you don't need to write this, but you need to have it when you are attempting your paper in exam. So uh, introduction, that's the main heading and major heading. When we talk about major headings, all the major headings in the feasibility report are cap are written in all caps. So introduction, first major heading, all caps. Discussion, second major heading, all caps. And then if you see, uh, conclusion, major headings, all major heading in all caps, and then recommendation again, a major heading and in all caps, right? So remember that all the major headings are in all caps and the subheadings are in 
title case as purpose problem and the following you see uh, you know as we move along so introduction is the first major heading followed by the heading uh, the subheading purpose it is good and for neatness and cleanness it is important that you leave one line space between the major heading and the uh, subheading purpose now what do we write in purpose? Simply, why are you writing this report? So the purpose of this feasibility report is to study which smartphone will best meet our communication needs. Okay, and then, okay, what did, once you are done with the study, what will you do? After analyzing uh, various smartphones, sorry, there is a, uh, there, there, are, there, are these, there are two words which should not be here. After analyzing various smartphones, I will recommend the most cost effective smartphone option for our employees. So as you see, so this will be the end result. Okay. So the, you write these two sentences in uh, purpose section followed by one line space and then you write the problem section. So in problem section, you basically mention the problem which prompted you to conduct this feasibility study or the background information which is important for the reader to understand why this feasibility study was conducted. So let's read this. The ever evolving landscape of mobile technology has rendered our current smartphones inadequate for our communication needs. Perhaps our devices lack the processing power to run the latest applications essential for staying connected. Additionally, outdated operating systems and security features on older smartphones can leave them susceptible to malware, malware and data breaches, hindering access to secure work applications and jeopardizing sensitive company information. So you see here that it's talking about what is the problem with the current smart, currently used smartphones. So uh, it is very important to mention this. And uh, so it's kind of a background and a problem you are setting the stage for the feasibility study. Regardless of specifics, our current smartphones are hindering our ability to communicate and uh, sorry, effectively and efficiently. So because of these things such as lack of processing power and, you know, security features, older security features and all of them, uh, the smartphones are hindering effective and efficient performance. So to overcome these limitations, this feasibility study will embark on a comprehensive analysis of various smartphone options. Now it depends what kind of feasibility study you are conducting. So in this study, uh, we are just looking at the options. For example, option A, B, C. In this case, we have got Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra, Oppo Reno 11, and the third option is Apple iPhone 15 Pro. No, just an assumed information. Now, in other case, now here what we are focusing on, we are focusing on the options. But if you have got an option, there can be another feasibility study that if you decide, for example, to buy Apple iPhone. Now, from where will you buy Apple iPhone for your employees in bulk quantity? Now, then the feasibility study will focus on vendors. So for example, vendors, by which we mean people who sell things, V-E-N-D-O-R-S. Now vendors, so for example, uh, shop A, shop B, shop C, or company A, company B, company C, which can help you get these uh, smartphones in bulk quantity um, and at obviously reasonable prices. So it depends on what kind of feasibility studies. At the moment, we are looking at options. So we are not talking about vendors here. If you are talking about vendors, so you will remove, simply remove this word options and you will write vendors and uh, you will talk about these, uh, these options, right? So whoever the vendors are. Discussion, that's the second major heading. Obviously before this heading, the heading there should be one line space and then one line space after this heading as well followed by the subheading criteria. Now, criteria is what? Now there, if you have got three options, there and you will compare and contrast those three options based on a criteria. So what, what the criteria is, for example, A is cost, 
ideally under PKR 70,000 to be financially accessible for uh, for all while it's still offering good value. And then the second criteria is features and the third is outlook. So uh, like these are the three points, outlook, features and uh, cost. These are the three points using which we are going to compare these three options, Samsung, Oppo, and Apple. Okay, uh, now as you can see, talking about the format as well along the way, we have come to page number two, and therefore we have to use this formality. When we come to page number two, we'll copy paste this whole section of two. So Muhammad Alam, comma, supervisor, you can see on next page, the on next page, the on the very first line, Muhammad Alam, comma, supervisor, followed by the date, same date, and followed by page number two. Remember, there are there is no line spacing between these three. Once you are done with line one on very next line you write date on the very next line you write page number two all three lines are done with then you 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 leave two line space ash i'm writing here so that you keep in your mind there are there's two line space here okay once you are done with this once you are done with this then you resume your work from the previous page that is page one okay now uh, this is the criteria and once you write the criteria in simple form you come to the next part that is analysis but remember there is one line space before analysis right after each section when you complete one section try and keep one line space so that it is easily readable and is and looks different from the other content analysis now how do you do analysis there are different ways people use different paragraph formats and uh, maybe tabular form right i use a blend of a blend of both for example i would like to draw a table like this on in column one i set the criteria which is cost features and outlook and in column two i talk about all the things related to samsung and column three i talk about all the things related to oppo and in column four i'm talking all about you know um, all the features all the costs and outlook all the things about apple iphone so once i'm done with this um, i would like to explain this whole table through a paragraph right so i leave one line space and then i talk about this paragraph so this feasibility analysis m to identify the most smart suitable smartphone for purchase within the constraints of a recent graduates budget and the demands of a software development role right so you can see that's the role uh, a fresh graduate is supposed to assume so what kind of smartphone can be suitable? While the Apple iPhone 15 Pro boosted advanced features is ideal for IT work, it's price drag exceeding exceeding uh, PKR 1 like 90,000 fell outside of a budget range. If you go back and see what is the cost here, so maximum 70,000 budget, and then it goes beyond the budget, right? So, so you, you compare and contrast. In one line, you mentioned, okay, what is good in option A and what is lacking? What is the weakness? We come to then option two in the next sentence. The Oppo Reno 11 priced at 45,000 offered a compelling value proposition. However, its plastic build cap quality might not be the most durable option for everyday use, especially considering the potential for travel and commutes associated with the job. So uh, it's good in terms of value, in terms of price, but it's not good in terms of durability. So you talk about option two, talk about its strength and weakness. Then you come in the last, you come to the most suitable point, right? The Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra emerged as the most promising option, striking a balance between the affordability and functionality. So priced under PKR 70,000, it falls within the targeted budget of the company, 
right? So if you can see promising option, affordability and uh, functionality. So keeping that in view, this looks to be the most suitable option. Okay, as you see, we come to page number three and we follow all the uh, formalities of page number three. Then we line the two line space and then we come to conclusion. Conclusion, which is another major heading has to be in all caps. Okay, and uh, then you start writing the conclusion section. So based on the findings of the feasibility analysis, the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra stood out as the most promising choice. Since, okay, why is it most promising choice? Because, or since it combined capability and affordability in a harmonious manner at less than 70,000 PKR, which is within the company's intended budget. So why is this option suitable? Because it meets the budget requirements. Okay, then conclusion answers one question. So this is like, this is something which is hinted, which, which is hinted at in the previous paragraph. So uh, this paragraph answers the question, uh, how will this solution, potential solution solve our problem? What is the significance? What is the importance of this, uh, this solution? So you write this smartphone boast a powerful Snapdragon 8 generation processor for smooth multitasking and development tools and all other features such as camera, app handling, and you write all these things. So you'll be, you be very specific about how this selected option may solve your problem. And you can see that in the problem section, we mentioned something related to this. Uh, for example, uh, what were the problems with the current smartphones? And then furthermore, the phone's premium glass and metal build with IP68 water uh, resistance prioritizes durability. So if you see durability, a crucial factor for everyday use. Therefore, considering the combined criteria of features, outlook, and budget, the Samsung Galaxy S24 appears to be the most suitable choice for employees working the software uh, development force, working in the software development force, right? So you see on the basis of combined criteria, so you again link your choice with the criteria. So in, con in recommendation section, you explicitly mentioned, we have already made a decision to some extent. Uh, so now in recommendation section, um, you clearly say that after analyzing all three options, I have found Samsung Galaxy S24 the most suitable and cost-effective cost effective, uh, smartphone to be purchased for our employees. Therefore, I recommend this. That's the point. That's the most important thing that you explicitly recommend here. It's purchased in bulk for our employees as it is. It will not only solve our problems, but it will also ensure effective work by employees at the software house. More importantly, it comes under our budget in this way we can have a number of smartphones for all our employees so this is all about feasibility report i hope you, you liked it and you understood it and thanks for watching subscribe to the channel and please share this video lecture with all other friends thank you